Hey, it's Mr. Dang, and it's really cold up here right now. You'll see me bundled up in the next few videos. So for this video, I'll be showing you the rename columns function, when you would use it, why would you would use it, and how you would use it. So let's check it out. I'll begin by describing when you might encounter a use for rename columns. I'll start with my data. I have a table with rows 1, 2, and 3 here. Those are the ID numbers for those rows. Each of those rows has data in columns A, B, and C. I send that data or connect that data into Power Apps. Inside the Power App, I might set up a gallery that shows this data in a more pleasing way. It might visualize an image. It can show the different fields that I want. Um, but I also build in an editing experience into the app. So row one, two, and three, I make some changes to them. For row one, I might change what I have in column A. Row two, I might change the information that I have for row two, column B and C. And then for row three, I'm thinking I might make some changes to whatever data I have uh, in the third row for columns A and B. Now, normally I make those changes immediately. This is because I don't want to accidentally close my browser and lose all the changes that I made. So I save those changes, I patch those changes immediately. But there are some cases where uh, the changes that I make to my data, I don't want to commit right away. And I might make a lot of changes. Instead, I might take those changes and I collect them to a collection, kind of like a shopping cart experience. I tell Power Apps, you know what? These are the changes that I want to make. Hold them in this temporary collection until I'm ready. And then all at once I I save that entire collection's worth of data, all of those changes. And this is where rename columns comes in. Let me jump back to the start. So rename columns is going to enter the picture now because I need to tell the original data source, the one in the cloud, that from these changes that I've collected, pick this row, pick that first row, find the matching one in the connected data source, change what's in column A, find the second row, look it up, change what I have in columns B and C, look up that third row, and change what I have in columns A and B. So I would have to do a lookup to that connected data source where the ID number in the collection equals the ID number in the original data source. This is where the problem happens. If you compare ID number with ID number, that's the same thing as comparing one to one. One is the same thing as one. Two is the same thing as two. Three is the same thing as three. Um, what you actually need to do is distinguish between uh, the ID number in the collection and the ID number in the, uh, the connected data source. They have the same name, but they really point to different things. So or they, they point to different sources where, where you get that ID number. We'll take a look a little bit deeper when we go into the actual formula for this and why it makes a difference. I've created a basic three screen app where we could explore rename columns a little bit more. This is tied to the contacts entity and common data service. So here are some of the contacts that I have in this sample entity. And you'll see that I put in some conditional formatting. The ones that are in blue, I've made changes to their, either their city or their street. And I collected those changes to a collection that I'm calling changes. I'm going to scroll all the way over to an important column that I need you to understand uh, for the scenario. 
every single row inside the contact entity has a contact ID number. It's a GUID. Uh, it's about 32 characters that makes that row unique. So later, when I save all of the data, when I save this change, this change, and this change, what I want, the logic that I want to put inside the app is look up this contact ID number. That's the exact same thing in the connected data source. And make the changes to the city and the street. Let's see what that would look like. When I click the floppy disk icon, I want its on select property to perform these actions. Here's the gist of what I want to achieve. For all of the changes, for every single one of those changes, I want to make, a cha make an update. So I use the patch function. So each of those changes, one, two, and three, will repeat this action of patching. Now, patch is going to update uh, a record inside, a, uh, inside the data source that I specify. I want to make some changes to the contacts entity. So I'll specify contacts as my first argument. My second argument is, what am I going to change? Well, I'm going to, in this case, uh, I'm going to change a lookup. I'm going to look up that respective record. I'm going to keep it blank for now. And then when I look up that record, which part of it am I going to change? Well, I'm going to change the street name and the city. I put it in between curly braces. Again, it's going to repeat this patch for each of those changes that I saved into that collection. Let's take a look at that lookup a little bit more. Well, I'm going to look up the exact same record in the connected data source, contacts, where the contact ID in the connected data source uh, matches the contact ID in the changes. Right now, you might think, oh, it works. There's no red error. Uh, it's just going to happen. Well, this is where we are going to be needing rename columns because contact ID, uh, uh, PowerApps is going to be thinking, Contact ID num uh, contact ID is a the name of a column in the context table, and it's going to compare the exact same data from the context table to itself, which means everything is going to return true because the first record in the context table is going to have its contact ID number equal to itself, and all the way to the last one. We need a way of saying to Power Apps. This first contact ID refers to the uh, connected data source, and the second one refers to the changes table. We need to tell it that. The easiest way to do it is to rename the column of the local collection. It's easier to do it to the local collection um, for, for greater performance. So here's my changes table. I will, in front of it, I put rename columns the name of the table, the name of the column that I want to rename, contact ID. And what do I want to rename it to? Contact ID. Uh, I like to use underscore just so that it maintains the exact same name with a slight change. Close the parentheses. Now the contact ID column in the changes table has an underscore. So when I perform the lookup, instead of having that second con instance of contact ID being the exact same thing as that first one, putting the new name will distinguish it. So now I'm comparing uh, the col column in the contacts table, the connected data source, with the local collection of changes that I want to commit. One really neat thing I want to call out is uh, thanks to our community feedback, rename columns is now able to rename multiple columns all at once. So if I wanted to rename yet another column like this account uh, roll code label, I could rename that column with an additional comma 
And then what do I want to rename it to? I'm just going to quickly call it column two. I could rename as many columns as I want by separating an additional column, uh, comma. Uh, and then I'll just put another example here, column three. So thanks to the community for that. So you can try this pattern of renaming a column to distinguish uh, when two different tables have the exact same column names. You can make that distinction. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.